Yesterday, we covered the uh, beginning of the end of Boris Johnson, and I really do believe that that is correct. If he does not end up resigning over all this, then he will over something else, and this being a contributing factor. And uh, so the people who might not remember, this footage, or at least this lady here, was caught on footage in a test interview in which she was laughing and trying to joke up about how would I lie about the fact that we were having a party when everyone else was in lockdown. That was caught on camera and then released to the public and made her look a tit. And it turned out they had a bunch of parties, didn't they? Yes. So, of course, she came out and uh, cried. Wait, on, sorry. Just to interrupt. It, like, weird how that, that question came up, isn't it? Mm. Like, we're, we're doing the testing, see if you'd be any good. Or do you lie about if, uh, you know, if it came out that we had a bunch of parties that we're obviously not going to have? But, like, she clearly knew in the clip as well. Exactly. They, they all knew. Yeah. So, and then she came out and cried, and uh, who believes it is uh, the thing on my mind, of course. Because uh, BS, I mean, come on, we've all seen how these people operate at the level they do. I mean, from the tape itself, these people are kind of lizard humans, where yeah. they think that lying to the public constantly is just a laugh. Well, they something. don't really think of the public as people. They think of the public as statistics. Yeah. Or well, she's also a former smear merchant, so no, don't good. care. Used to yeah. work for The Guardian. Got what she deserved. BBC. ITV. And then ITV exposed her, so... <laughs> Some, uh, I've got no sympathy whatsoever. Smear merchant or smear merchant violence. I mean, who am I going to side with? No one. Get the popcorn. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> she came out, and uh, I presume some smear merchant called her up and said, you're going to go out there and cry like you've never cried before. And mm. she did. And that's yeah. that. But anyway, moving on from that. So I did like this response from Tell Feature. Can't wait for her leaving party. <laughs> that's gonna be fun that's a very good response very witty anyway moving on so there was the defense of the christmas party and the other parties that it was uh, legal under the coronavirus act because the government is exempt because they're a public body turns out there's also another legal defense that they could pull in court which is the public health act 1984 in which there is a crown land exemption crown properties and if a crown property is a government department as well mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. they're also exempt from I love how all of the rules don't apply to uh, them, but they do apply to us. Yeah, so on a legal basis. So yeah. the traditional thing to do would be make an exemption for yourself and then go by the law anyway, but yeah. uh, nah, pff, pff, nah, just break the law, why not? And then and just be like, loophole, get lost. Anyway, but speaking of Her Majesty... But, e but even, like, even then, like, just sorry to interrupt, but like, imagine the optics on that. Of course. coming. I mean, like, talk about losing moral authority. But here. to lose it even harder... Yes. Well, speaking of Her Majesty, yes. Crown properties being exempt... She didn't. Everyone remember Good this. Good point. I mean, this is the thing that sort of gets me, which is like, so we'll get into a minute, because Boris has doubled down in response mm. to being caught out. Everyone in this country, I mean, for foreigners maybe who don't get the level of this, everyone saw the funeral of Prince um, Philip. Prince Philip. And the, the queen queen's there, wife of, what, 60 years? Uh, husband of 60 years? On her own. Family had to be at the other side of the, of the abbey, yeah. in which she was not allowed to be with them. And... Yeah, you know, Jesus Christ. I mean, That's you awful, think, yeah. You think an awful thing to do to a person. She had to yeah. do that live on TV and go through all of that and everyone saw it. The entire world is watching Prince Philip's funeral and she's on her own because of coronavirus. Mm. Couldn't even be comforted by her son. And uh, yeah. yeah, so that's her. And then you've got Boris and the lads in number 10 having, yeah. a, having a few pints, which, yeah. I, I don't think you could get a worse optics situation. And That's we, because it's just so terrible. It's it's so awful. It's honestly so terrible. But <laughs> you, you would think that this is why I said yesterday. Like I, I said that, that well, they're not going to do the right thing. But I didn't expect them to do this. I was actually shocked that well, they I doubled think, down. Well, I I think that the right thing, as I was saying to you yesterday, would just be just to come out and Chad going, yeah, you're right. The lockdowns are wrong. Omicron's not a problem. Let's get rid of all this and get back to normal. Yeah, that could have been a saving grace. He would have got yeah. some support from that. And, well, he uh, would have got a huge upswell of support. Instead, he decided to make everyone hate him because yeah. if we go to the next one, we left off with the news being that there were three parties, not one. So already looking terrible. Uh, it turns out uh, it gets worse. So if we go to the next one, we have Carrie uh, Johnson did host a oh. flat party with several of her closest allies when in the UK was in lockdown. The Telegraph has the names of the guests but won't release them. I can't believe it. Hmm wonder why. Anyway, if we go to the next one, it turns out the Daily Mail have also been given these names. And, oh, uh, they're not releasing them either. Also suppressing so the names. So the Telegraph and the Daily Mail had journalists at these parties. Yeah, come on. Like, the smear merchants were hanging out. Prove me wrong. If, if, Sue if, me if you like. If we're wrong, just release the names. Yeah. Release them. We'll and, go through it in court. And don't scrub any of them if they work at the Mail or the Telegraph. Anyway, <laughs> so there's that. But if we, uh, we carry on, so if we go to the next one, we have uh, Dominic Cummings says the most senior journalist boy, in the Dominic. country are in, alleged to have been at the party. And Ooh. Dominic being the man who is leaking all of this, 
Yes, Dominic clearly protecting himself while he was in number 10, <laughs> being like, well, I, you know, just, just collect all that evidence, Dominic. And, I, and you can tell that this is a, 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 a very planned series of, like, bombshells that he's dropping. And I'm loving it. Yeah, I'm no, loving I can't wait to see what comes out next week, to be honest. <laughs> so Dominic saying there as well, the reason they're not releasing it is because their names are on it. And I'm more inclined to believe him than anyone else oh, in this yeah. situation. So let's, uh, let's keep going as well, which yeah. is there was a snap poll done about yep. all this, this situation. Over half the country said the bar should resign. Mm -hmm. It's that bad. Yep. A third of conservative voters also said he should resign. <laughs> I Jesus. Mean, that's, that's pretty awful for the incumbent prime minister. A third of your own supporters are like, you need to step down, mate. Not yeah. even... This is a bit bad, but no, you need to go. I mean, this is reaching Joe Biden levels of unpopularity with your own party. <laughs> yes, overnight as well. Yeah, is, yeah, over uh, one day. You know, the, what is it, the straw that broke the camel's back, essentially, but it is a pretty big straw. Yeah. Anyway, so also, um, I mentioned party attendees said they should also, people said the party attendees should also resign. Mm -hmm. But if we go to the next one, there's also the other part of the poll in which 80% of the country said they felt let down over the whole thing. So just to get a sense of how much uh, disappointment there is. And just to be clear, he pitched it, look, we're all in this together. We're all going to do our part, you know, sort of wartime, bulldog spirit. Okay. And then it's like, you're just partying in number 10. One thing you had to do, not throw a party. <laughs> three, three. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so if we go to the, the next one, we have... <laughs> A Tory source has suggested that Cressida Dick will not investigate Boris Johnson's lockdown party to return the favour for not being sacked. That's right, because she should have been sacked. Mm. And that would have been the right thing to do, considering she What was she it is... she'd done again? Oh, she was under fire for a lot of things. I mean, yeah. the fact that she's a wokeist made yeah. everyone on the right hate her. Yeah. She then uh, sent the officers in to apply the law in the... Uh, was Sarah Everard vigil? That's right, yeah. And, uh, well, the but laws there were, there were, there was something... feminists, so... Corruption and stuff like that, but yeah, she she definitely should have been fired. Yeah, but everyone hates her on political scene as well. I guess, yes. and uh, she was kept in there by Boris. And I was like, why? Weird. Well, well, I guess he knew this was coming. Well, we know because now we have the next link here, which is uh, that the police have said that they're not going to investigate the party as it's retrospective. Right, that's very interesting because all crimes are retrospective, including the ones the police are investigating. Such well, as you, Christmas parties last year. You can't investigate a future crime. No, but also, if we go to the next one, <laughs> as Keir Starmer made the point, the CPS is currently prosecuting many people for hosting parties yeah. in the same period. But not Boris. There are plebs currently being prosecuted by the Crown Prosecution Service, but not Boris Johnson or the people intending that party. Could it be any more clear cut? No. They, they, there is no logic to this. It is pure political power. But I mean, that, that statement, oh, we're not investigating because it's retrospective. You literally, it's impossible to investigate a crime that hasn't happened yet. Sure, and that's some logical arguments. But yes. you can see blatantly by the facts of they yes. are investigating plebs who do this, but not politicians. Well, then... That they do investigate retroactive, pro retrospective parties. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever their statement was, you might as well have just played white noise. It means as much. Mm -hmm. They're just saying no. Anyway, so if we go to the next one, we have, of course, that uh, no, it was four parties. <laughs> there, were, there were four now. Okay. Boris Johnson attended and spoke at a leaving due for one of his advisors. The drinking session was more than 30 people and offered and uh, was on the November the 27th when the rest of the UK was in lockdown. Fourth. We're on the fourth party now. Four. We Just, had one. <laughs> and then we went from one and that was enough for like everyone to be like, what the hell's wrong with you? And then we went to two and right. three. Now we're on four. There's also a fifth. <laughs> uh, forget the next one. Party number five. December the 14th, 25 people had a bash in the Conservative HQ, including the PM's top team. We're at party number five now. If there's a sixth, I don't know. The thing is, right, this would all have been not an issue in any way, shape or form if Boris had come out and done the British thing and said, the government does not have the authority to lock you in your goddamn homes. Yeah, but we're well beyond Magna that. Magna Carta. <laughs> Bill of Rights. You know, like this is the... the English tradition going back a thousand years. We do not have this level of tyranny in England, and therefore we're doing nothing about this sort of thing. You make your own decisions because you're the people of this country and you get imbue us with the authority. They could have had all the parties they wanted and this would not be a problem. Yeah. We don't care about the parties. No, we don't care. Good. Have like, parties. I don't care. Have parties. Yeah. Drink. Meet friends. Make yeah. merry. Don't lock me in my home. And then have a party. Yes. 
That's the well, point. no, I don't care about the party afterwards, really. I don't want to be locked in my home. But well, the, no, the manifest it, hypocrisy. It, the, is, the tyrant that does the yeah. tyranny and then just says, but not for me. Yeah. That's bad as well. But anyway, there is a sixth party, in case you want to come, of course, which is on uh, it's on Facebook. So, <laughs> Christmas rave at number 10 Downing Street. And uh, at the time I noted, I think it was uh, 600,000 people are going. <laughs> so they can't stop us all, boys. Well, <laughs> so, that's, that's a good point, actually. Yeah. They can't. Oh, uh, boy. Yeah, so that's uh, something to go and check out. Mm. And and, uh, but that's the level of also interest in this whole situation because, mm. of course, the entire country was affected by this policy. So you can't yes. say, oh, it's only a third of the country who care or something. No, everyone cares about this. Yes. And that's mm. why it's such a big issue. Not just, oh, he broke the rules and then he can try and sweep it under the carpet. Not going to happen. You did this to everyone when you shouldn't have done anything to anyone. Yeah. Also, if you're coming to this party, uh, apparently it's uh, very liberal parties with MPs. Oh, yes. I <laughs> forgot all about that. Yeah, so at the same time all of this comes out, uh, there's also a story that comes out about Parliament. Traces of cocaine found in the UK Parliament, including near Boris Johnson's office. But this was because it came on the heels of them saying, we're going to be cracking down middle-class drug use. Yeah, Boris was out trying to act tough with the police and then immediately came out that he had been breaking his own lockdown rules, which... Uh, police officers don't look at me and yeah. then also there's loads of drugs in the pipe please don't look at me <laughs> like why why do this though why come out and be like we're, we're against middle class drug use like yeah but there's drug drugs all over your office yeah the details in here drug detection wipes found traces of cocaine in 11 out of the 12 bathrooms tested do you remember like six months ago a year ago something like that all the conservatives kind of going well i've done drugs ha 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 yeah, was well, Rory came out and was like, "I've yeah. done opium." Yeah, in Afghanistan, like a bunch of them were like, "Yeah, we've you know." Didn't Michael weed. Gove say he did cocaine? Yeah, something like that. They 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 all came out as if it was cool and edgy, and it's like, okay, we all, we all done drugs. What's well, you know, shut up? But like, why make a big deal out of it? Again, if you had done nothing, like when they came out and said it, nobody cared. Everyone was just like, "Okay, losers," uh, you know, and and just got on with the day. If you'd not come out and go, right, we're going to get tough on drug use. What, this bunch of drug users are going to get tough on drug use, are they? I mean, not the people I put in charge of policing drug use. But also like, just what's going on at these parties, is what in my mind. Of course, they, of course, obviously, right? They, they, obviously, they're taking loads of drugs. It's, it's, don't even need to mention it. I know, the point is, if they'd done nothing, this wouldn't be a scandal. But it's not even like a one-off, but I love how it's not even just like a few of them take drugs. It's 11 out of the 12 bathrooms tested, <laughs> tested positive for cocaine. Yeah, cool. <laughs> it's but, just like but, so. They, they also said the bathrooms tested, including some only accessible to those who hold parliamentary passes, including lawmakers, staffers, and journos. So the journos are in there with them. There was some quotes from a source who said that yeah, they were with them as a journo, and the MPs were like showing off to the journos that they would do lines of coke, and they seemed to get like a, a power rush from it. Of course they did. And it's just like, what's wrong? With and, you people? and the thing is, no one would care. No one no. would care about this. If you hadn't turned around and gone, yeah, so we're going to crack down on middle-class drug use. If you just skipped that part, it would have been like, MPs say they use drugs, there's drug use found in the thing, and everyone would be like, there's drug use found in my own bathroom, what do you want? You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what they would have said. They also <laughs> said that uh, uh, cannabis was openly used in the yep. premises, so uh, if you're there, uh, Snoop Dogg's visiting. I guess. <laughs> well, uh, did you hear about Snoop Dogg when he went to the White House to visit no. Trump? No. He, he smoked in the bathroom Nice, because he just wanted to. <laughs> So apparently if you visit Westminster as well, they're very accommodating. But this is the point. It, it only matters because they're being hypocritical about it. Mm. If they did nothing about this, no one would care about any of it. Speaking of hypocritical, oh, so God. you get found breaking the lockdown rules. So what do you do? Okay, there's two rules. Oh, you, you could turn around and be like, actually, okay, yeah, it's all bollocks and we're not going to, you know, we don't care about them by our own actions. Therefore, we won't enforce them on you. We'll take it back. Yeah. Or you just say nothing, which is the typical politician thing to do. Just yeah. ignore the story, try and talk about something else. Boris doubled down and came out with plan B as it is labelled. Yep. So this is him saying we need to have a national conversation about mandatory vaccines. Okay, I'll be quick. No. That's how you think it would go. Let's play the clip. Well, I do think that we're going to have to have a, a conversation about uh, ways in which we, uh, we deal with this uh, pandemic because I want to be absolutely clear with you. I don't believe we can keep going indefinitely uh, with uh, non-pharmaceutical uh, interventions, uh, I mean restrictions on people's way of life, uh, where just because uh, a substantial proportion of the population still sadly has not got uh, vaccinated. And I think we're going to need to have a, co a national conversation about the, the way forward. Everyone's had COVID, you prat. I mean, it just doesn't make any statistical sense. 95% of, of people have had COVID. Yeah, I mean, forgetting the moral argument of enforcing vaccines on people and also the practical argument of that's what made the anti-vax movement initially. Yeah. So why would you want to do that again? Yeah. But whatever. So then we also just have the data 
as on the government's website. And as you mentioned, 89% have had the first dose, 81% have had a second dose, 37% have had a third dose. I don't know, fourth doses. <laughs> and I mean, somehow there are still COVID <laughs> people are in the country. And that's right? of age 12 plus, remember. Oh, good God, really? Yeah, see? Percentage of population Jesus. age 12 and up. So that's also including, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 year olds. So you're not even, you know, the elderly, everyone, everyone who's at risk has had the bloody thing. I haven't even had a test. But these are not those who have had it. One in six are confirmed to have had the virus by their own statistics. Yeah. That's another 13% of the population. Well, 95% have got the antibodies. But, and then 95% have got the antibodies. So, and then we've got this mild version that doesn't even put you in hospital. And you're sat there saying, I can't continue to have these non-pharmaceutical conditions. Sorry, the restrictions you are putting in. Yes. Because of the people who are unvaxxed and uh, don't have the vaccine. But like, the vaccinated spread the disease. But they're not the ones doing it, dum-dum. You are. Half, half. Harry and I are going to record a podcast on this. Uh, half, half the people who are dying of COVID are vaccinated at this point. Yeah, well, that's you know, with so many people being vaccinated, exactly. Big shook. But exactly. It's, I'm not even. Yeah, it's not even a criticism of the vaccine. But it's just the <laughs> the other point of like, being like he's saying I am being forced to do this because of the unvaccinated. No, you're being forced to do this because Pfizer are like we paid you, Boris. It's your decision. And you can look at the data for yourself and trying to say that it's because people haven't had interactions with the virus and therefore don't have the immunity is just statistically Who's wrong. Who's got the strings on you? Anyway. Who's so got the on, strings? And there was a very funny part of that uh, speech, conference, whatever yep. you want to call it, in which, uh, if we go to the next one, he said, uh, people should work from home, but should have office Christmas parties. It's like he's mocking us. I mean, Yeah, yeah, it, it is. I mean, this is what I mean by the doubling down is probably the worst thing he could have done. But then to also kind of like take the piss out of the public whilst you're doubling down. Again, the, the, the correct response would have been to come out and be like, you know what, you are right. We shouldn't have done that party, but then we shouldn't have any restrictions. All restrictions are over. Carry on with your lives. Have a good day. I, I don't know how you look more of a, a prick. I, I'm, yeah. I, I'm sorry to be cursed, but it's just like, you know, the hell is wrong with you? Moving on. So we'll get to the other information about this, which is, of course, there's politics for all decided to put out the government was announcing these restrictions just as hospitalizations are going down yeah as well which doesn't make any sense doesn't even matter because four percent of people uh, are beds occupied by covid patients so that's nothing but shut up one more prediction also did come true i said yesterday that uh, no matter what he comes out with if he doubled down as the joke i said then the labor party will turn around and be like govern me harder daddy oh they did so if we go to the next one, this was their initial response that Labour will support the COVID rules he's bringing oh, in. Opposition. Opposition. Oh, mm. God, I mm. hate the Labour Party so much. The Labour opposition over here decided to support the new COVID rules. No, they didn't stop there. They decided to go further. So if we go to the next one. We just have, uh, they said that the rules, <laughs> the rules aren't going far enough. <laughs> That's literally the meme. Yeah. Literally, the, like, so in this office, there's just a meme of whatever whatever the Conservatives say they're going to say. The Labour Party just come out and go, it's not enough. We want to go further. And literally... Govern me harder, oh, daddy. God. And uh, they did come out with that. That was their statement. Look at that. Even the follow back pro Europe person at the bottom, for the love of Zeus, this will never end until we, the people, decide it does. The patronizing middle aged lockdown enthusiasts can stay at home forever if that's what they want, but I'm not playing anymore. Even the Remainers, yeah. who are pro lockdown, pro all of this stuff, are like, okay, this has gone too far. This, this is a beautiful moment in British politics, and we'll get into in the third segment, especially. The right and the left, as in the pleb right and left, yes. have all actually agreed on this point, which is just. Well, government bad. They're definitely taking us for a ride. Yes. I mean, took I, the left a little while to get there. I Yesterday, but. on my Facebook page, I unironically shared an article by Owen Jones. Because it was correct. Feeling all right? Not really. I mean, <laughs> a bit weird. Uh, but for the first time ever, Owen Jones has said something that I can just sign off on. Yes, you are right. Uh, they are taking the piss out of us. Yes, and uh, we can see Keir Starmer taking the piss out of us firsthand here in his tweet in which he responded to it by saying that um, he welcomes the restrictions. You God, are. how is it come to this? Where literally everyone in the country, apart from Keir Starmer and Boris Johnson, the leaders of the two major parties, are in agreement against everyone else. I mean, loads of Conservative MPs are against these people, but... Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. How yeah. is it literally everyone in the country opposes this, apart from Keir Starmer and Boris Johnson, and they just happen to be at the top of these two parties? Yeah. And for some reason, the British public have got a 
pathological genetic aversion to voting for either, you know, you've got to be the Labour or the Conservatives. Well, last time around, you know, there was the break the vote. You know, sure. It was the getting Brexit done. But election. you notice that whenever, whenever it's, oh, the Conservatives the are dipping the polling, there, why? Because the Labour Party are going up. I, I don't want to be too mean because, I mean, who else do you vote for at the moment? There are so, plenty of uh, small, anyone. small good parties out there, and I won't have time to name them all, oh. but uh, uh, there's no unified uh, opposition, let's say, because oh. all the rest of them in Parliament all agree. I'm so and angry about this. evident by his statement here saying, I welcome stronger measures to protect people from COVID. Who? doesn't say but boris johnson's recent actions have undermined public trust serious right. times call for serious leadership i agree with boris johnson i just hate boris johnson <sighs> shut up kia serious you times call for serious leadership me the opposition agrees with the government on everything but you I, should choose me but, over the government but i am a serious opposition i am i didn't have a party in 10 downing street because i wasn't invited they're taking the piss <laughs> they're just taking the piss undoubtedly if you enjoyed that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site. We've got loads on there, and it's all really, really good. For example, we have regular premium articles that discuss contemporary events, and we have a, an audio track for our silver and gold tin members. And of course, we have our regular series on there. We've got Contemplations, which is Josh and whoever he wants to have talk to him about a particular topic. On this one, he's talking about Bo, uh, talking to Bo, sorry, about in-group preference. Moving on. Uh, Bo and myself also do the Epoch series, which says talking about history. This one's Belisarius, part three, because uh, Belisarius was a 6th century Byzantine general, and he had an amazing career and a tragic, a genuinely tragic end. And the, the myth of him is old blind Belisarius, baking on the streets of Rome, would have been better than what happened to him. But I won't spoil it. I'll let you figure out. Uh, I'll let you find out. And of course, uh, we do our regular book club as well. This week's or this month's, I don't know how often we do them actually. Fairly regularly. It takes a while to read a book. But this is Callum doing John Stuart Mill's On Liberty, in which I rail against utilitarianism. I used to be a huge fan of John Stuart Mill, like five, ten years ago. And since then, I've really soured on utilitarianism. And so the framing of his arguments, I find kind of insufferable. He's not wrong in what he's arguing for, but it's the way he's doing it. But uh, anyway, we also do a bunch of premium podcasts, uh, things that are entertaining, we think, like the politics of Star Trek that I did with John, uh, talking about, well, is Star Trek a socialist paradise or not? It turns out it's not, but it's, you know, it's something different post-scarcity liberalism basically but that's a really good podcast and uh, we also have to put up things on the website that we can't actually put on youtube because youtube has editorial policies about things such as where all these heart attacks are coming from giant elephant in the room it's probably climate change don't worry about it uh, we also have fascinating interviews from really interesting people uh, such as this one uh, which is an activist called luke avery who's a christian but don't worry he's not bible thumping in this what he's doing is talking about the ancient wisdom in the biblical book of proverbs and it's very much daddish sort of stuff and i really enjoyed doing this one and uh, i think i'll have him back in hopefully to uh, do another one ecclesiastes or something and uh, hopefully we'll do another one soon and if you want to keep up with us you can follow us on getter.com i love the the phrase and getter getter doing something like that i don't know you're it's doing the, really well on there though aren't you? you've got like eleven thousand followers it's yeah, so come follow me on Getter, come follow yeah. you on Getter. Yeah. And, and uh, lotuses.com on Getter. Lotuses underscore com on there. Let's go check that out. And also the conference itself. So this is a conference yeah. being put on by uh the Getter guys. This is on the December the eighth. So update on this. The Getter conference has been postponed until further notice. We all let people know as soon as we have more information. Apparently it was postponed thanks to the global freakout in response to the Omicron variant. So sorry about that. So if you'd like to get access to all that premium content, you can subscribe at lotuseaters.com. Thank you and goodbye.